So, good morning. <laughs> so, um, ah, yeah, um, breakout groups. We started about, um, well, let's say two and a half months ago with what would you like to do? So, and uh, where we are a bunch of people who are interested in testing and validation. And we were discussing what to do and what not to do and where we see testing and validation and came up with the framing and the first try. So when I'm going to present you the framing and uh, then I hand over to Kai, who will give you um, a short outlook on what uh, what we tried and uh, yeah. So motivation, so we have already, so the red um, software um, artifacts we already built according to SPICE, according to whatever. And um, now a new guys in the house, some software components which are not developed according to SPICE because they are open source developed. They are they come developed by the community and um, we have then this topic group which is tackling how to get these software components tested and validated in a community yeah, based approach so building some kind of well part of the ci cd tool chain part of the development process in a well software engineering manner um, to um, go next step to put actually these new components into the car. So, and we had uh, some, yeah, the, the talk before the last talk um, was talking about, well, we need a CI CD tooling and so on and so forth. And yeah, so we would like to help all the CV projects at first to um, get well, automotive grade in the first place, well, in the in the framing of testing and validation by, well, adding code to existing projects as we think that that an integration task or from there should look like. Um, well, and then while well, compiling from the experience we make together, some some guidelines how to, well, when you start building something where you take, well, we be aware and how do you do that? And well, from this topic group, we wish to find people, companies together that, so building this automated tool chain. So, and um, so test and validation is a, well, big field. We well know these, all the driving simulation things from open paths and so on and so forth. Well, um, we would like to focus on, um, yeah, like we have easy use or virtual easy use, and we would like to put them together in an integration manner. And then starting from, well, incomplete set of software. So to deal with that, set of the rest of the, well, vehicle or, well, let's say vehicle, because we learned today, well, this is a broad field and um, set up the actual network and well network between these ECU, these computers will talking can talking some IP talking whatever and well then this has to be some kind of quality of service and this is one of our first framing and uh, well Philippe the uh, slides are broken. <coughs> Oh, okay. Um, execute the test cases in a no neutral description. So we, you could observe that some other projects already use Gherkin and Cucumber, and we thought, well, we have good experience with that, and it's accepted. So we don't need to reinvent how to write neutral test cases. We have to, well, build something when we have such test cases to set up like these networks and to well execute these tests and this is hard enough to build something like that that works in in general and um and then not to forget 
um, to observe what the result of the test is and put it into, well, um, maybe when you come from the cloud world into open telemetry or when you come from the automotive world to, into DLT. So, and um, then you have the package where you can put it into back into your development process where, well, you will start it developing and start it trying out and, but you can also put it back to the uh, people who would like to, well, figure out if this is ready for deployment into a car or if the requirements are satisfied and so on and so forth. So, and yeah, it looks nice and, and clean and um, I am have to have to look to to Kai. Are you ready? It, it doesn't look like we were, we were able to share my screen. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. And um, we have a we have a Eclipse project, Kuxa, and uh, well, um, Kai uh, is going to show you how we integrated. Uh, yeah. How we integrated well the idea using Gerking and Cucumber for integration tests using Coxaval, and um, we we got we got some insights um, while doing that, and uh, yeah, when we when we when we uh, figured out the technical issues, yeah okay no problem. Yeah, well, if I can add something, so we from the Eclipse Foundation we want to completely support this, obviously, and. Uh, we we are going to, as I said, hire an Eclipse staff that is dedicated exactly to defining a process, uh, which includes clearly a big testing part, um, to make our projects as close to certifiable as possible. I mean, clearly you cannot certify an open source project, this is for sure, right? Uh, but you can still take as many steps as possible to make them as close to certifiable as we can. So. We will have a dedicated person that will think about a process exactly to to support also the testing and validation, which is maybe the biggest part of making something certifiable. Uh, yes, maybe like. Okay, so this is. Uh, a picture of what we have done with the Cooksaval project. So the overall idea for qualifying third party software in an automotive environment, of course, is uh, that you basically prove or at least verify its fitness for the purpose. And uh, if you take a look at your own software, then of course you can easily do that because you know what it has been designed for. You can then verify using your own test cases and uh, therefore say, yeah, and it has been developed using a certain development process, so you can make sure that it actually is fit for the purpose. However, with third party software, in particular with open source software, you usually do not know where it comes from, how it has been developed, what the original idea was, why it has become what it is now, how many changes it has undergone, who has contributed what for whatever reason. But in the end, you still want to use it maybe in your in vehicle application and therefore you need to make sure that it is fit for purpose that it actually does what it is supposed to do so the question now is how do you figure that out if you're lucky then it comes with a, basically a, a test suite that makes sure that it actually works but even if it has such a test suite for example a unit test suite you still do not really know what it should actually be doing because in order to figure that out, you often need to take a look into at the source code level itself because the unit tests are usually implemented in the source code. And in order to make this process easier, an idea has been around for about 10 years. I think it's usually called uh, feature driven development and that uh, revolves around the idea that you specify test scenarios in a real world language that people actually read and understand. And uh, this is an example of it. This follows the Gherkin syntax. Who knows Gherkin in the room? A few people, wonderful. Okay, so you know what we're talking about. So this is uh, basically about describing a scenario in, in real language, uh, and it usually uses the 
um, the basic structure of describing or telling what the people what the scenario is about, in this case, reading the current value from Cook-Savell. And then it uses this given when then syntax uh, describing an initial fixture, if you will, the given stuff. Uh, and then it uh, describes what you're actually doing to the system and then what you expect the outcome to be. And in this case, uh, it is about uh, reading a data entry from the Cooks of Al server of a particular name using this uh, VSS path syntax. Um, it describes the type and the value in this table. And now using these uh, variables in the text, you see the overall idea is that you now run through the scenario with all the um, with all the examples from the table. And um, yeah, you can give this to basically anybody and he at least can hope for the fact that it's easily understandable what the system is supposed to do. And if the test actually runs through successfully, then you can also be sure, okay, now the system does what this has. The system <laughs> does what, what it is supposed to do. Um, now, this can be specified up front by a product owner, if you will, or by people doing developing the project, but it can also be done after the software has actually been written, and that is what I have been doing. So I have basically um, re yeah, reverse engineered the functionality of Cooksavell, and believe it or not, while I created this scenario, I actually discovered that it probably does not really what it was supposed to do, which is a good thing. In the end, I contributed a, a bug fix for that, but that's a different story. Um, but the overall idea is now you have something in place and any any downstream consumer of the software can actually take this description, these feature descriptions, and understand what your system is supposed to do and can actually validate it based on this description that it is fit for your purpose. Um, this is, however, not really very common in open source projects yet, but we at least feel that this should probably become a best practice in automotive grade projects because it makes it much easier for downstream consumers to actually use your software, if not in ASIL, but at least in QM scenarios. And uh, what I originally tried to do is show you some real code for the first time today, um, actually, yeah, showing you how this looks in the Rust source code, um, how it is applied and how you actually execute it and how you can see you now the scenario now works. Or if I change something in the lower scenario, for example, where I would change the type to an unexpected type, how it would fail so that you can see how, how it actually works. But uh, still, it's available online on GitHub in this pull request for the Cooks of all code base. So if you're interested, you can take a look and, and play around with it or talk to me about it, whatever. So. This is uh, what we wanted to, to show. Next slide. Am I going backwards? Yeah, you're going backwards. Oh, I hold it the other folder. Okay. <laughs> so, what lies ahead? Um, do you want to continue? Um, yeah, what lies ahead? So, we, as, I, as we said, so we would like to well um, engage in, in the question how to qualify FOSS software for safety relevant use cases and um, offer so reproducible builds like Kai introduced so like to add this 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 um, yeah test cases to the builds to um, get here more automotive grade more well into adding adding automatic tests to to get the, the quality into um, the projects or to get the transparency about the quality of the projects and yeah. That, that's one aspect. Uh, on the other hand, also of course, reproducible builds form a very strong basis for actually doing any qualification because it doesn't really make sense to qualify a, an artifact that you want to employ in your software if you do not know what it has been built from using what version of the source code, what compiler, what link or whatever. So you need to have a lot of control over the tool chain in order to really make, be sure that what you're actually putting into your into your car is the stuff that you have qualified before. So that is, of course, a, a relevant basis for that. We haven't really touched on that or, or defined how this should be done, but we have a strong feeling that this will play a very relevant role in all this thing. 
Yeah, and then um, we heard some projects also, well, doing some kind of test and validation. So we're happy to, to, to join us and to have the discussions with us and to, well, shape our road ahead. And uh, so, um, thank you. Thing. So we have the projects in the room, right? So you have seen that Kai, man, I mean, managed to find a bug. 